Hello, my name is Eric Goodale, and I'm the Senior Social Security Disability Attorney here at Henson First in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I wanted to talk briefly today about a little bit of a smaller topic in the Social Security Disability world, and that's the impact of going back to school while your claim is pending for benefits. Um, school is not like a return to work. And if you want to have an idea about the impact of going back to work and how that may impact a pending claim before you're approved for benefits, uh, check out some of the other videos that I have posted. Um, I just did one recently about the impact of going back to work on pending cl disability claims. So please check that out. But the impact of school is a little bit different. I mean, school is uh, similar to going back to work in a lot of respects, very much depending on the type of program that you're in, but it's not a job. So Social Security can't deny you saying you've gone back to work because school is equivalent to work because it's not. Um, so some of the factors that comes up when we look at going back to school, uh, one of the big ones now, especially since COVID has been going on, is um, how are you going to school? Are you going in person? Or are you going online? Are you going a combination of the two? Um, going online obviously changes things because there's not as strict the deadlines. You don't have to physically get on and off campus or sit in class. You know, you can have a bad back and sit laying in bed watching your lectures and doing your assignments. Um, so, you know, going to school online, especially like in these big online programs like University of Phoenix and those types of things, um, they, you know, that's a big deal. So one of the first questions I always ask my clients when they're going back to school is, is it online? Because that plays a big factor. I mean, if you're going in person and you're claiming you got a bad back and you're, um, you know, going to like here in our area to, let's say, NC State, then, um, you know, walking all the way across campus to get to class and back, that's pretty tough to coincide with saying you're disabled because you got a really bad back or you got a bad hip or bad feet or something like that. So online versus in person, that's one of the factors that we consider. Um, another factor is what's the type of program that you're doing in comparison to what your disability is. So for example, um, if you have uh, a bad hip, maybe you've had a total hip replacement, a total knee replacement, you've had major back surgery, and that's what you're saying you're disabled on, and you go back to school, as you say you want to keep your, your mind sharp and keep something active in your life, even though you're disabled from a work perspective, which is fine, and Social Security encourages that, but let's say you go back to be an auto mechanic or a chef or something where you're on your feet or it's physical um, and it's in person and you've got a, you know, let's say you're in healthcare and you're trying to go back to nursing school or something like that. And those are physical jobs. So even though school itself, as far as like nursing school, for example, is not something that would get you denied uh, for disability benefits, Social Security is going to be paying attention to um, you know, what are the types of jobs this is going to lead to? What's the physical requirements of just actually learning these types of things while in school? I mean, obviously, a, um, a trade profession or something like if you're, uh, you know, trying to learn how to be in construction and some kind of being a welder, as I said, being a nurse, that's very different than going back to business school to get your MBA or, or just to get your associate's degree in in criminal justice or something like that, where it's primarily, um, you know, in class and just assignments or reading and things that isn't physical. You know, another thing too, is when I talked about looking at the, the type of program that you're in in comparison to the conditions that you're alleging, and that is, let's say you're, you're alleging mental health problems, can't be around people, you have panic attacks under stressful circumstances, and then you're in a uh, you know, let's say a, a higher level program, you're trying to get your MBA, like I just mentioned, or that's where going in person comes up again. Like, how do you go to school in person with all these people in class um, if you have trouble being around people? Uh, so the, the factors, those are factors that Social Security and the Social Security judges are going to be paying attention to. So it's not necessarily um, that you're going to school is going to impact your case. It's more of how are you going to school? You know, online versus in person. What's the type of program that you're trying to do? Um, 
are you, uh, is this something once you get your degree, do you have full intentions of going into that work field? Or do you don't know whether you're going to be able to handle that? Are you just going to school just to you know, keep your mind functioning while you're not physically able to do something? Um, or is this something where you're going to try to go back and use it and actually get a job in this profession? Um, are you going to school part-time versus full-time? Are you going at night versus during the day? Um, again, the, the biggest thing, as I've been mentioning multiple times, is are you going online versus going in person? Um, you also can look at how do you do when you're there. I mean, if you're in school and even if you're going in person but you're doing miserable, you're, you're failing, your grades are bad because maybe you're in pain all the time, you can't concentrate, you can't get your assignments done, that's a factor that, that the judges will consider. Another thing is, are you being accommodated? Did you talk to the teachers about what your disabilities are? Um, are they aware of it? You know, do you get more time to get your assignments done? If you're going in person, does the teacher allow you to get up and leave the room to stretch your back, for example? Um, are there other accommodations that are provided? If you have a vision problem, the, the, the teachers say you've got a, uh, a guaranteed seat up front so you can see better, um, whatever. If you have a, a hearing problem, um, are, are you able to uh, use some type of dictation software that records uh, the lectures or anything like that and spits out the notes um, or just even just flat out recording the lectures as a whole um, to, you know, because you can't hear. So you can go back and listen to them uh, when you're able to hear it in a more quiet environment. Um, so those are factors as well. And if you're getting those accommodations, getting a, a letter from the school or from the teacher that addresses that. Um, if you're not doing well in school, getting a letter or something from the school or the teacher to address why you're not doing well. You know, it may be factors that are beyond just you don't understand the materials of the course. It may be because you, again, you, maybe you're in pain, maybe you're on high levels of narcotic pain medications and you, your mind's just not functioning where it needs to be to do well in a course. So these are all factors that Social Security is going to pay attention to. Um, so my suggestion is if you want to go back to school, by all means, um, you know, an attorney should never tell you not to go back to school um, because it's going to impact your Social Security case. You know, an attorney should be telling you that it's fine if you try to go back or you want to go back to school, but here's the impacts it could potentially have on your claim, depending upon, again, what you're going back for, the circumstances of, you know, why you're going back to school and how you're going back to school. But school in and of itself, as I said right in the beginning, the general rule is that school in and of itself is not something that just will destroy your chances of getting disability. It's a factor that needs to be paid attention to, but it's very different than uh, the rules as far as uh, when you go back to work while you have a pending claim for disability. So my suggestion is talk to your attorney, let them know you're in school, let them know what's been going on and between you and your attorney, you can have a conversation to address whether this is going to impact your claim or whether it won't. And if it does impact it, how can you and your attorney figure out the best way to present it to the judge to say, hey, this is uh, not something that should impact your ability to be approved for disability benefits. So that's essentially what uh, the impact of going back to school is. Um, if you have questions about that, please talk with your attorney or feel free to contact me here at Henson First. Uh, our office number here to our, our number to our office here in Raleigh, North Carolina is 919-781-1107. So thank you. Uh, best of luck if you are trying to go back to school, but please make sure you keep your attorney uh, in the loop and knowing what's going on so they can address how that may impact your claim. Thank you very much.